welcome to the ITU studio in Geneva. Where I'm pleased to be joined in the studio today by Suella Hansen, who is Director of Network Strategies Limited in New Zealand. Suella, welcome to the studio. Thank you very much. I'd like to start off by talking about uh, this event that we're here at the moment. It's the World Telecommunication and ICT Indicator Symposium, WTIS 2018. How important is WTIS in the overall development of the telecommunication stroke ICT industry? Well, I've spent um, most of my professional life undertaking quantitative analysis in telecommunications um, for a mixture of policy makers and regulators. Quantitative data to support policy making is absolutely crucial to this endeavour. And uh, to be honest, most of the data sets I start with are ITU data sets because um, they are one of the few organisations which provide a consistent set of time series data um, which I can work with. So for me, um, uh, these data sets are crucial in my work and um, without them um, it would be impossible to support many um, important regulatory determinations and um, telecoms policies um, to advance economic development. And in this symposium is essentially bringing that data together as well as the conversations around it, is that right? That's right. Um, and also um, the nature of te telecommunications itself is changing all the time. The technologies change, markets change. And so with it, it is very important to keep um, indicators up to date. So definitions may need to change with the move of technology. For example, um, the definition of broadband itself, the speeds involved, the, the no longer um, are heard the, the speeds of even five years ago, terribly relevant to today's technology. So uh, this meeting gives the opportunity to revisit definitions and also to think about uh, new um, data that will be relevant going forward in this modern environment. As was officially announced last week, the 50-50 milestone for internet has use has been surpassed. However, there are still far too many people around the world waiting to reap the benefits of the digital economy. What more can governments do to bring more people online, do you think? Well, uh, I believe that Governments need to um, illustrate leadership so that they need to be using the internet through e-government themselves. And by e-government, I don't just mean a website, a portal. I mean integrating ICT into everything they do. Um, and that would go a long way towards um, demonstrating the benefits of ICT. I think that in many instances um, people are unaware of potential applications of the technology. While it's true that affordability is still a problem for many um, potential users, in many cases, um, particularly mobile technology, is becoming more affordable, mobile broadband technology that is. Um, yet, particularly the middle-aged and older demographic are struggling to use it um, for a number of reasons. Um, so government has a role here in terms of education and also the promotion of local content which is relevant to particular cultures. Let's talk about local content. What would you say has been the economic and social impacts of ICTs in New Zealand where you're based? That's a very good question because um, New Zealand is one of the few countries in the world where we have a national um, private public-private partnership for the rollout of um, ultra-fast broadband. And that initiated in 2010 with a very brave uh, decision by the government. And uh, the idea was that uh, 70 to 80 percent of the population of New Zealand should have access to fibre broadband um, by 2019. I think um, we're already um, towards 80% now. The take up of homes past um, is 50%. Um, in the rural areas where fibre broadband can't reach, 
Um, we have a rural broadband initiative. Take up of that is 40%. In terms of the impact it's having, New Zealand is very, very geographically disadvantaged. We're at the end of the earth. Um, and so we rely on um, getting our products to market somehow, our services and products. The introduction of high-speed broadband is already starting to show uh, economic benefits for the country. Um, as an example, in the service industry, um, we're seeing many more film ventures taking off in New Zealand and also in post-production. Uh, that is an area that is particularly booming and um, frankly high bandwidth is essential for that. In the primary industries, um, which are key to our economy, we are seeing um, the impact at the micro level. So um, uh, farmers are embracing the technology to improve um, efficiencies, to save on costs. And then also at the macro level, um, the, the taking of the products to market, um, so many transactional benefits and um, improvements are occurring through the availability of the broadband. Finally, what key messages do you think people be, will be taking away from this year's symposium? Well, I hope um, that they'll, they'll take away the message that uh, it is important to continue to support and um, channel resources into the collection of consistent data sets over time. I, I hope that, that people are taking on board um, the value of this data to policy decisions. And um, I do hope um, that a key takeaway will be that the body of evidence um, that uh, broadband in particular is supporting economic development is becoming quite overwhelming now. And I'm hoping that the lower income economies, the policy makers in those countries, will consider um, putting in, in practice um, some of the learnings um, from the other countries in this respect. Swella Hanson, thank you very much indeed. Pleasure.